is minimalism for the rich or for the poor. Honestly, I debated a long time about even making this video. It's been on my list of videos to record for months now. And the reason is I don't like to make my channel um, a negative place, right? I want it to be a positive place, a place for looking forward, making things better. And honestly, I was a little bit worried that this subject was gonna draw too much negativity into the comments. And a lot of that was coming from previous experience from videos that I've made and comments that people have left. And then part of that was just from my own emotional response to reading some of the blog posts that were out there. Because honestly, like as I was reading what a lot of people were saying about minimalism being for the privileged and for, you know, like the white woman with no makeup who has the funds to purchase all of these high-end things, yada, 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 uh, I started getting pissed off, right? Honestly, we have enough stuff to argue about today, right? Like we have enough stuff to separate us and divide us and make us hate each other and make us, you know, say that our stance on this thing is is better and that your stance is bad and all of these different things. And so I'm going to respond to some of the things that I've seen online, some of the things that I've read about whether minimalism is for the privileged or for the poor and just kind of like give you my perspective. When I first started learning about minimalism and practicing it for myself, I was poor. Like considering going on a rice and beans diet so that I could save up money kind of poor. It's funny because at that time, I was worried that me sharing my message, that people were going to think that I was too poor or like that I was only practicing minimalism because I didn't have the money to buy more things or to afford better things. And at that time, I was getting comments on blog posts from people saying things like, I'm glad that being poor is in style right now, or I'm glad that minimalism is trending because I can't afford furniture. And so I was really caught off guard when the comments started shifting and I started receiving comments about how minimalism was for the rich and the privileged and how, you know, like poor people can't afford to declutter this or that. Um, it really caught me off guard. Who has clutter? Everybody has clutter. I know a lot of people think, well, only poor people have clutter because they collect things because they can't afford more things. Or rich people have more clutter. They just have more storage and more room and space to be able to hide and store those things. Or they can afford more things, so they must have more things. Um, and the truth is both sides have clutter. We have clutter problems in the high end and on the low end. The only difference is maybe the types of things that are purchased or the types of clutter that are being collected. I feel that there are four core points of disagreement when it comes to whether you feel like minimalism is for the privileged or for the poor or what you believe in that regards. And the first one is spending versus saving. People who feel that minimalism is for the privileged will say that wealth gives you the choice to buy or not to buy to hoard or to restrict. And in regards to buying things that are quality over quantity and really investing in those quality pieces, we'll say that, you know, like for a capsule wardrobe, you're looking at maybe investing $1,000 upfront for these good core quality pieces, funds that a poor person may not have, and that is a privilege to be able to start off with those quality pieces. So essentially saying that it's a privilege to be able to practice living with less because you don't have the option to choose pieces that are gonna last longer or to be selective about the items that you bring into your home when you don't have a lot of resources to work with. And while I understand the idea there and the concept there, looking at the statistics and the way that people on a larger scale are spending their money or wasting their money, losing their money, it seems like you're actually saving quite a bit more by having fewer items in general, which is really what living a minimalist lifestyle is. In 2021, for example, the average American family was spending $1,800 per year on clothes and women had an average of $1,000 to $2,500 worth of clothes in their closet with 32% of women owning more than 25 pairs of shoes. Now, as of this year, 2023, 11% of US citizens are renting a storage unit and the storage units are averaging about $100 per month a piece. So money is being spent regularly on quantity. And that's not to mention the day-to-day -day life expenses of losing items and having late fees because of things like lost bills. A consumer agency's report said that 23% of the participants had turned in bills late because they couldn't find them. Aside from the quality that you're able to afford and what you're filling your space with, 
The quantity is the issue that's causing us to waste money on repeat. Another core point that there seems to be a lot of disagreement on is with decluttering itself. And this is where I get the most pushback and where I tend to see the most comments, usually on some kind of a decluttering checklist type of video or blog post. And the theme is that rich people can afford to let things go because they can just buy it again. And that's why I've mentioned before that it kind of irritates me when people say that, like if it's under a certain amount of money, just go ahead and discard it because you can buy it again if you need to. I think that, that sharing and spreading that information makes people think that you do have to have money in order to practice a minimalist lifestyle, that you have to have the means to replace all of the items that you get rid of. And that's really not the point. By them being clutter, it means that you're not actively using or needing them. Or like I mentioned before, just the act of getting the clutter out means that you're not going to be losing things. There aren't going to be as many late fees or wasted hours trying to find things. Plus, I think that people so often devalue you the amount of money that's spent on maintaining and keeping up with the things that we own, like keeping them clean. <laughs> You're using like cleaning supplies, water, like you have to invest things into maintenance and upkeep. Uh, batteries that you're having to use, if you're keeping things plugged in, you're talking about electricity just to keep them running, right? Not to mention probably the biggest waste of money being the amount of money that you're investing into each square footage of space that you own that may be absorbed or taken over by clutter. There may be entire closets or entire corners of rooms that you're not able to access or use because you're storing stuff there, stuff that you're not needing and not using. Number three is that whole idea that I mentioned earlier about quality versus quantity. Now I am all for quality. I think that, you know, quality lasts longer, right? So you can buy something, spend a little more money on it up front if you're able to, and end up not spending as much on that item in the long run because it's going to last you longer. Some things might even last you an entire lifetime versus having to replace them every six months. So I do think that there is a lot of investing value when it comes to the items that you own. Like if you're able to invest in certain things, you do save in the long run. But I also understand that not everybody has the funds to invest in every single thing that they own because we own a lot of things. You're talking about, you know, clothes and shoes and cookware and furniture. And, you know, if you invest in everything, then yes, that is a more substantial upfront cost. So I definitely get where that's coming from. But I also don't think that quality and cost are always directly tied together. Like you definitely don't have to own a certain quality or a certain standard of things in order to practice a minimalist lifestyle. I mean, like I said, when I started out, I was poor. <laughs> I did not have any expensive things. And even now, like I spent under a thousand dollars on my couch and I was able to purchase that by selling my old living room furniture. And a lot of the items that I own around my house were thrifted. They were bought secondhand, maybe on offer up if we're talking about furniture, or we have a couple of Ikea items that are not very expensive, but they still look nice. So you definitely don't have to go spend a lot of money in order to A, make your home look quality and B, you know, have items that you actually enjoy and that you can appreciate. I don't think that there's always a correlation there. I have read also the complaint that, you know, wealthy people can afford to go thrifting for fun as being part of the whole minimalism as a privilege thing. It doesn't make sense to me. I've personally benefited quite a bit from buying things secondhand. It's less expensive. You're able to get the same quality. It's more eco-friendly, you know, do rich people go thrifting for fun? Maybe, like I guess a lot of YouTubers maybe do it um, and that's fine. I still don't see how that directly relates to minimalism. If you need to buy something and you're going to buy it, then why not buy it secondhand if you're able to find something that's of good quality that way? I personally think that it's awesome that secondhand purchasing has become popular because I think that it could do us all some good to, you know, share, right? Share the things that are already used and to not constantly just be like spinning the wheel of waste. Buy something new and then get rid of it. Buy something new and then get rid of it. You know, the longer that we can make these items last, even if it's not specifically with the original purchaser, I think that that's just a win-win for everybody. Actually, the only investment piece that I can think of in my home personally is our bed. And I think that it was totally worth it, but it was definitely an investment even for us. I mean, we have our gorgeous desk that's in our bedroom that was made by Matt's dad. We definitely don't have like high-end West Elm quality type of 
furniture, but we take care of the furniture that we have, right? And we don't have a whole lot. So we're really able to pay attention to those items and keep up with them. And the last thing that I hear mentioned a lot, and I also get this on, you know, comments for my own video whenever I show my space, is that, you know, minimalism perpetuates the loss of culture and style and personality because of all of the neutral tones and the, you know, limited aesthetic. The way I see it, the way you choose to live with less is up to you. It's totally customizable. There are eclectic minimalists, naturalist minimalists, you know, like simple farm living out in a wooden cabin minimalists. There are minimalists who live out of a backpack. There's the boho minimalism style. There are wealthy minimalists. It's like, it doesn't necessarily have to be one thing and it definitely shouldn't be. I mean, it's just a common goal. The goal is to save money and just to be more intentional and conscious of our daily life choices. You know, to not just constantly be splurging and following through with everything that catches our eye and every whim that comes to our brain and just really to enjoy being here and being present with what we currently have. You know, prioritizing life itself instead of all of the stuff in it and just finding that relief from constantly wanting the newest thing and buying and shot, like it's exhausting, right? Trying to keep up with everybody, trying to make sure that you have such and such standard of stuff is really exhausting and it's totally not necessary. So I really appreciate that about a minimalist lifestyle, that it's more of appreciating and enjoying the things that are really more important than all of that other static. At least that's where I'm coming from. And if you agree or if you enjoy the idea of having more space and creating a holistic clutter-free space for yourself, then I invite you to go ahead and subscribe, turn on those notifications. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, snag my holistic clutter-free PDF guide that's down there in the description for you. Or if you have an hour to, to invest in really learning how to create a holistic clutter-free space, I have a free masterclass that you can watch down there as well. Anything else that you need, be sure to let me know down in the comments. And hopefully this resonated with who it needed to resonate with. I'll chat with you next week.